it's time once again for Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And tonight's bedtime story is about two girls, one that was born in America and one that moved recently from Mexico to America. And um, it's, a, it's a good story. It's something that I think we can all learn about because I'm sure like you, Maybe we just feel comfortable with our own friends, maybe our own type of uh, friends that have the same beliefs that we do, or maybe work at the same place. But sometimes it's good just to take a risk and uh, get out of your comfort zone and be a friend to someone. And that's kind of why I like this story. It's called My Friend by Eliza Amado and Alfonso Ruano, and this story was copyright in 2019. Are you ready? Here we go. I knew you would be my best friend the day I came to school the first time. Right away, you understood so much about me, and I understood you. I didn't know too much about shows on TV, but soon I could guess which ones you liked the best, and I watched them too. And when I brought you a present at the corner store. I was sure you'd love it, and you did. You gave me your favorite book to read, and I read it all the way through, even though it was hard. After I finally finished it, I told you, cross my heart and hope to die, that now it's my favorite book too. I am so lucky I found you. I know you, and you know me. That is why we are best friends forever. BFF. When kids at school laugh and say to you, how can you hang out with her? She is so weird. You just say, who cares? We're best friends. Is that a problem? And if new kids who are more like me say, why are you hanging out with her? She doesn't understand us. She's one of them. I always say, you are wrong. You don't know her. I do, and she knows me. She is my best friend. One day, you came to dinner at my house. My parents knew you were my best friend, so they made my favorite dinner and set the table as though it was a holiday and you got all dressed up. I could tell you didn't like the food so much. You had trouble finishing your dinner, but that was okay. You'd never eaten our kind of food before. And you didn't know the kinds of things we always do at dinner. You didn't know that my father always shouts and gets mad about things that he has read that day, and that we sometimes shout back at him in our language. You didn't know that my mother gets mad at us for shouting and arguing and complains if we don't eat our food. But I could see that you were really trying to understand what was going on and to be extra polite, even when there was so much noise and arguing. At first, I was kind of embarrassed, but then I thought to myself, you are my best friend. It's okay.
But then, my dad put on his favorite CD, and he began to sing along as loud as he could. It's the song that makes us remember when we were before we came here and what it was like. Sometimes I feel like crying when I hear that song. When we went back to my bedroom, you began to laugh. That was so weird, you'd say. I felt like dying. And soon you got up and said, I'd better go home and ask my mother to call your mother to come and pick you up. It was still early. That night, I cried. My parents kept asking me, what's wrong? I want to go home. I hate it here, I shouted. We can't go back. We have no choice, my father said. Just be glad you are safe and stop whining. It could be a lot worse. You were my best friend. I know you, and I thought you knew me. I listen to your music all the time, even if I don't like it but you laughed at mine. At school, I eat the same food you do every day, even if it's strange. But you don't even notice how strange it is for me. And even though you tried, I could tell that you didn't really like our food. You don't know anything about me. I played my song over and over. I was so mad at you that I never wanted to see you again. Finally, I fell asleep. When I woke up, I had to go to school. I didn't want to go. You were my best friend and now I was all alone. I knew you and I thought you knew me, but it isn't true. You don't really know me at all. But my parents made me go anyway. As I walked down the street, I felt really bad. If you don't know me, I thought no one in this whole world and would know who I am. No one in this whole world knows me. What will happen to me when I have no best friend? Then I saw you standing in front of the school. I started to remember that on the first day of school, you came right up to me and asked my name, that you sat next to me every day, that you told people who made fun of my clothes, drop dead, she's way cooler than you, that you called me every night and talked to me about everything that happened that day. Then you turned around and smiled. Hey, thanks for dinner. I really had fun. Hey, I said, and we walked in the door together. Best friends. The end. Well, sometimes when we think things aren't going so well, we sometimes play that in our mind. We, we have an image of, uh, you know, how things went. But really, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Kind of showed in this story here where they are still friends. It wasn't a disaster. That's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.